بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم let's try to see the configurations or uh, the complete lab configurations here so we assume this connectivity we already did so i have already connected this part we connected router f0 by 0 connecting to f0 by 20 here so connectivity i did so the first thing will be ensuring that the vlan configuration is there and you know how to configure it depends upon the requirement so in my example i'm assuming Port number 1 and 2 belongs to VLAN 10 and port number 3 and 4 in the VLAN 20. So assign the ports into the respective VLANs as if as per your topology. So if I verify my switch configurations here, I already did that. So I don't need to do it again. And we did enough labs previously in the VLANs how to do. So no need to explain these commands or no need to configure them again. So it's already pre-configured here. And the second step is we need to configure the link which is facing towards the router should be a trunk port, right? So the link, this link should be trunk, right? Switch side, trunk will be configured on this side. And how to configure the trunking also we know. Go to port number 20. And then we have to say switch port mode trunk. Means I am saying that this port is a trunk port. Which means this port is going to carry the multiple VLAN traffic. It will carry the VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40 traffic. And while it is doing that, it is going to tag. Right? Why it is going to tag? You know, trunking, when I say trunking means all the trunking concepts, whatever we discuss, they all will apply. So if the packet is coming from this port, when it is going out of this link, it is going to carry that particular frame with a tag. And in that tag, it is going to write down the VLAN ID so it is coming from VLAN 10 now based on that the router will understand but so based on this tag the router is going to understand that okay when I'm receiving a tag with a 10 of 10 I'm going to send it to this sub interface of course that will configure next I did not do that but when the router receives any frame with a tag it's going to see the tag so based on that particular tag it is going to figure out this frame be, should be sent to which gateway or which logical interface, right? Because it has to go to the gateway, right? So who is the gateway? That will be identified based on the tag. And of course, we need to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q command. So this is not required in most of the switches because by default, uh, it uses dot one q. But if it supports, you can still go and configure dot one q encapsulation. The next thing, let's see this configuration. Let me just quickly do this configuration so that we'll go parallelly. So the first step is already done. Now the second step, we need to configure port number 20 as my trunk port. So we do that by using, uh, what is the command? Switch port mode trunk, right? So I'm saying, hello port number 20, you are a trunk port and your job is to carry the multiple VLAN traffic and your job is to tag the packets when you are sending because you will be routing the traffic for multiple VLANs. So the same trunking process applies on this port. Okay, so once we configure the trunk, the next step is we need to go to the router and on the router side, we need to create sub interfaces. Now sub interface configurations are like first step, we need to go to the physical interface. Because these sub interfaces or the actual physical interface which I'm connecting is F0 by 0. And make sure that interface is in no shutdown state. Because if this physical interface, if it is in shutdown state, automatically whatever the sub interfaces we create will also will be in shutdown state. Right? So if the physical interface is down, the logical interfaces created based on that physical interface will also be down. So make sure that that particular port is up and running. It's up. And also make sure that there is no IP address. Because when I'm creating sub interfaces, we'll be assigning the IP and using the IPs based on the sub interface, not based on the physical interface. So in case in your production scenarios, if there is any already IP configured on the physical interface, make sure that remove it. And if it is, if it is a new router, basically without any configs, or if you have configured all, or, or if you have erased all the configurations, in that case, you don't need that. So to be on the safe side, I just use this command. Now the next step, we need to create a sub interface. So we need to create a sub interface like this interface F0 by 0 
dot we can use any number but as i said will be recommended to use the same number as a vlan number to avoid confusions and but any number you can use and make sure that that number is unique which means i cannot go and say i'll use f0 by 0 10 for vlan 20 also that is not correct so if i'm using one sub interface that a sub interface you should not create on the same router again or else it will overwrite normally so i'll be using 20 for the vlan 20 okay and the next command is we need to say encapsulation dot one q and 10 now here we need to specify the encapsulation so here i'm using dot one q encapsulation so probably the same encapsulation we have to use on the router side so this is a method we do trunking on the router side it's not actually trunking we can say but basically it's it's going to say that uh, this router interface the sub interface will be using dot one encapsulation and it is going to receive all the traffic for vlan 10 because we need to specify which sub interface is a gateway for which vlan here i'm creating this sub interface and we need to tell that if a packet is coming with a tag of 10 like here when the packet is coming from the vlan 10 it goes on the trunk link and the trunk link is going to send it back on onto the router side and when, the, when it sends a router side, it is going to send with a frame and with a tag, as I mentioned. And in this example, it's coming from the VLAN 10. So the VLAN ID or the tag contains the VLAN ID of VLAN 10. So now once it is received on the router, so physically it receives on F0 by 0. That's a physical interface. Now the router should know, actually this frame belongs to which sub interface. Because... We, we will be creating multiple sub interfaces on this router and the router should be aware that this sub interface belongs to which uh, sorry this packet or the frame belongs to which sub interface so this number is not going to tell remember this number can be any number so when, uh, when you are saying f0 by 0 dot 10 so don't assume that it will go automatically go to 10 that is not correct so this number will decide so this number is going to say that if any packet is coming with a VLAN ID 10, that should be sent to which sub interface? This sub interface. So we need to specify that. So if we don't specify, then the router will never come to know which sub interface is configured for which VLAN. So simply giving the same IP, same subnet IP is not is not also correct. Of course, in the next step, we also assign the IP, same IP, just like we do but this ip is not going to tell or this number is not going to tell basically this command encapsulation dot one q 10 is a command going to tell the router that anything received with a tag of 10 that should be sent to this sub interface and of course this sub interface have this ip configured or as a gateway so this is the configuration you need to know basically so two commands First, we need to create a sub interface, and this number can be any number as I said. And we must mention the encapsulation, of course, the same encapsulation what we use here. Nowadays, we don't use dot uh, ISL, so we use only dot one q, and this should be the exact VLAN ID. Remember, this should be the exact VLAN number to whichever the interface, and of course, IP must be on the same subnet what we are using here. So similar way, we need to create another sub interface. In my example, we got f0 by 0 dot 20. So the encapsulation, encapsulation command, right? So encapsulation command here. So if you see this f0 by 0 dot 20, now this sub interface is a gateway for which VLAN? VLAN 20. And of course, the IP also should be in the same subnet, what we are using in the VLAN 20. So these are the steps we need to configure on the router. If you want, a router to do inter VLAN routing, uh, route the traffic between multiple VLANs with the help of sub interfaces on the router. So let's get into the configurations on the router side and, and configure the sub interfaces. So if you check the topology here, so on the router side, uh, we'll go and verify the configurations if there is any. So this is based on, these are already pre configured, so I'll just try to reboot the router just a minute 
So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to connect a router again here. So I'm using this 2811. It supports uh, Ethernet interface. Of course, you can also use Gig Ethernet also here, connecting on port number 20 as per my topology. So on the switch side, we already did the trunk configurations. And if you verify the show VLAN brief, already the ports 1 and 2 in the VLAN 10 and port number 3 and 4 in the VLAN 20. So I just connected the router because my router was having the initial configs already. So we'll simply go to router and then we'll say interface F0 by 0. Say no shutdown to make the interface up. Okay. And then if there is any IP address, remove it. So the next thing F0 by 0 dot 10, you can use any number. You can see there is a 4 billion range. You can use any number. So that many interfaces or sub interfaces you can create still. So I'll go with the exact VLAN number dot 10. Now, once I give this command, now you get into the sub interface mode. Now, if I try to give the IP address without the encapsulation command, if you remember, if you try to see the configuration we discussed, we have to say encapsulation dot one queue command, then we need to give IP address. So let me try to give the IP address before it's not going to accept. Because first, uh, on this sub interface, we must configure a dot one queue encapsulation or isl whatever it is before you do before you assign the ip so remember this order because normally the commands order is not compulsory like you can still say no shutdown first and then ip address but in some cases you need to compulsory give this command before you give this command in some cases like here this is the case so the first command when you must uh, define the encapsulation of course, it supports only dot one q dot one q, and then it clearly mentions the VLAN ID. You can use question marks always to check. It clearly says the VLAN ID. We have to give the VLAN ten, and then now if I give the IP address, it accepts. So likewise, I need to create another sub interface f zero by zero dot twenty, and then encapsulation dot one q 20 and then the ip address is going to be 180 to 168 2.100 done if i go and verify show ip interface brief so i should see the sub interfaces even if you verify show ip route to check the routing table you can see the one dot network is on this sub interface and two dot network is on dot 20 sub interface and let's take an example. What I'll do is I'll try to shut down my physical interface. And if you verify, you can see automatically the sub interfaces also will be down if you shut down the physical interface. So this is something you know you need to be aware of. So I'm making no shutdown command to make it up back again. If I verify show IP interface group, that should be okay. So I think we are done with the configuration. So let's go ahead and try to verify the reachability between the VLAN. So I'll go to one of the PC. Let's verify the configuration. IP address, gateway, everything is configured. I'll try to ping to my gateway first to confirm the reachability from my PC to the gateway. If everything is configured correctly, like sub interfaces, I should get a reply. And now if I try to reach a different network, I must be getting a reply. So I'm generating a ping request from 1.1 to 2.1. You can see I'm getting a reply. And if you try to trace and see the packet flow 182.168.2.1, you can see the packet uh, first goes to 1.100. 1.100 is your sub interface gateway, and then it will come back again. The routing process is still the same as I mentioned as I discussed in the previous class. So whenever the packet starts from 1.1 to their destination is 2.1. So when it sees in a different subnet, it will simply send out of this interface. But the difference is when it is sending out of this interface, it is actually sending a, over the trunk link. So there will be a frame with a tag with a VLAN ID as I mentioned. And it reaches with a tag of 10. And once it receives on the router, the router is going to say that 
if I say show IP route, it's going to say that okay, so this is send on f0 by 0 dot 10 sub interface, which is the gateway. And then the router is going to say that if you want to go to two dot network, you have to go out of this f0 by 0 dot 20, which means another sub interface comes back again. But when it comes back in, it will come with a tag of 20 here. And it tag of 20 when it receives on a trunk link. The trunk link says again, okay, this belongs to VLAN 20. So I'm going to forward only to the ports in the VLAN 20 only. So on both the sides, they will be tagged. So when the packet is sent from the switch to a router, it will be tagged. And when the router is sending back from sub interface to the switch port, it is going to tag. So based on the tags, the switch and the routers will differentiate which VLAN it actually belongs. Like the router will identify the sub interface and the switch will identify to which VLAN it should be routed. 